Hello there, this is Glenn Berry from Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. In this video, we're going to cover two queries. These will include Query 23, TempDB data files, and Query 24, which is database file names and paths. This series of videos is going through the complete set of my SQL Server 2019 diagnostic information queries. These queries are available for free at glensqlperformance.com resources. Please keep in mind that I have other sets of SQL Server diagnostic queries for other versions of SQL Server. The queries you see demonstrated in this video are identical or very similar to the queries for older versions and the same concepts apply. Let's start with Query 23. This query runs the XP read error log extended store procedure in the master system database looking for a string value of the tempdb database has in the most recent SQL Server error log. The first parameter, which is archive ID, where 0 is the current error log. The second parameter is log type, where 1 means the SQL Server error log rather than the SQL Server agent error log. At a high level, this query simply tells you how many data files are in the tempdb database. Now let's run this query and see what it returns in more detail. As you can see, it returns a log date, which tells you when the current SQL Server error log was started, and a text value that shows you how many data files are in the tempdb database. In this case, we have eight data files in tempdb. Since SQL Server 2016, the SQL Server Setup Program has had the ability to look at your system and recommend a suggested starting configuration for tempdb. With older versions of SQL Server, you will have one data file by default, which can cause allocation contention issues with some workloads. Depending on your system, four to eight data files that are all the same size is usually a good starting point. Keep in mind that this query will return no results if your SQL Server error log has been recycled since the instance was last started. If that happens, don't worry because we can get the answer from the next query in this set. Next, let's take a look at query number 24, which is database file names and paths. This reads from the master files table in the master system database. And it basically just tells you where all the files are for all the databases you have on the current instance. So let's go ahead and run this query and see what it returns. So this comes back on my system and it shows the database name in the first column and then it shows the file ID in the second column and you can see that every single database for SQL Server has a file ID of 1 and a file ID of 2. 1 is your primary data file and 2 is your log file. And then depending on what, what's been done to that database over time, you might have additional data files. You also might have additional log files which you really don't want or need, but normally you just have additional data files. So then you see the logical name of that file and then the physical name which shows you the complete path including the file name in the file system for that file. And then you have a type description that shows you whether it's rows for data files or log for a log file. And then it shows you the state description, which is going to be online in this case. And then is percent growth, you want that to always be zero. Percent growth is a bad thing in my opinion. And you want to go and change that. And notice that the master system database and MSDB in this case have percent growth turned on for both their data files and their log file and that's the default configuration from Microsoft for SQL Server 2019 and I think that's a mistake you should probably go in and change that so they're not using percent growth and if we scroll over to the right you can see what the growth is set to and you can also see the total size of the file in megabytes so you can see how large your various files are and then finally max size if it's negative one that means unlimited so it turns out that the log file for the AdventureWorks database is set to this very large looking number and it turns out that's actually two terabytes and with modern databases that's actually not as large as it might seem so you might want to change that to unlimited although if you have a two terabyte log file you might have other problems to worry about and we can take a look here in Object Explorer what I'm talking about so if we go to the AdventureWorks database and go to the properties and then look at the files you can see right here that the max size is set to that number right there there and if you divide that by 1024 it'll give you 2048 gigabytes which equals two terabytes so that's not really going to be consideration hopefully for log files but it might be for a data file so you might want to make sure that that's set to unlimited rather than that value 
Finally, you might remember that I told you you can figure out how many data files you have in tempdb by running this query. So if you look here, we've got one right there, and then we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight data files in tempdb. So just in case somebody recycled the error log and the previous query gave you no results, you can get the answer by running this query. And we can also see that the total size of all these data files is all the same. It's all eight megabytes, which is actually a little on the small side, but you want them all to be the same size. This is Glenn Berry, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you would like more content like this because it really helps the channel out. Thanks for watching.